Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Unit 6, Lesson 6. And in this unit we're going to be talking about the different types of covalent bonds. There are two different types of covalent bonds. And we talked about them today in the lab, so really it's just a matter of getting them down on paper. The first type of covalent bond, uh, remember covalent means sharing, so we're sharing electrons between two nonmetals always here. The first type of covalent bond is called a polar covalent bond. And in a polar covalent bond, one of the atoms has a greater electronegativity. And as a result, uh, it has greater attraction for electrons. And so it pulls the electrons towards it. As it pulls the electrons towards it, it creates an unequal sharing of electrons. Okay, so if, if you take a look at this picture that I have here on the screen, in this picture, okay, oxygen has an electronegativity of something like, this is hard to do, 3.4, and hydrogen has an electronegativity of, I think today you guys told me it was 2.2, and so there's a tug of war for electrons. And as a result, the electrons move over here closer to oxygen. That's where you find the electrons. Okay, it wins the tug of war for electrons. So because the element with the higher electronegativity pulls the electrons towards it, and electrons have a negative charge, this will give that element a partial negative charge. Okay, so the element with the greater electronegativity gets the partial negative, and the hydrogen with the lower electronegativity would get the partial positive charge. What this creates is a positive pole, a positive pole in hydrogen here, and a negative pole, you have your plus down here, right? You get your plus here, and your minus over here, and it creates poles in the bond. And since poles are created in the bond, we call the bond polar. That's why it's called polar. So there's an unequal sharing caused by differences in electronegativity. Okay? If you look at fluorine and hydrogen here, there's another example. Fluorine attracts with a force, its electronegativity here is four. And hydrogen, again, its electronegativity is 2.2. So fluorine has a greater ability to attract electrons. The electrons shift towards fluorine, which gives fluorine the partial negative charge and hydrogen the partial positive charge. So you generate a positive pole and negative pole in your molecule, which is why it's called polar. That's sort of an appropriate term. Now, if you notice, if I were to subtract the electronegativities here, 4 minus 2.2, my difference in electronegativity in HF is 1.8, where up here between H and O, 3.4 minus 2.2, my difference is only 1.2. So the greater the difference, like HF has a greater difference than HO. The greater the difference, the more polar the bond. That's an important thing. So this bond, this is a more polar bond than the O to H bond that's up here, okay? And that's what we have at the top of our next page. The greater the difference in electronegativities of the atoms, the more whoa, polar the bond is, okay? A lot of times on the regions, they'll ask you to predict which bond is most polar. And so you have to find, look up all of their electronegativities like we did here, and then subtract them. And the less difference, right, like right here, this is less polar. Let me um, write it over here. And the greater the difference down here, the most polar, okay? So the greater difference in electronegativity, this is super duper important. I want you to highlight it or, or 
I don't know, star it or something. Ooh, that's a fancy highlighter. Um, the greater the difference in electronegativity, the more polar the bond. Oops, sorry. The second type of covalent bond that we have to talk about is a nonpolar covalent bond. And in a nonpolar covalent bond, the electrons are shared whoops, equally. They're equally distributed between the two atoms. Um, we also call this, oops, equal, yeah, I can spell, equal sharing. I can spell, I just can't type, of electrons. Um, equal sharing would occur if the electronegativities of the two atoms are the same. Okay, so for example, if you had something bonded to itself, if you had, for example, say N2, where you'd have N bonded to N, well, nitrogen has an electronegativity of 3. So this nitrogen here is attracting the electrons with the force of 3, and this nitrogen here is attracting the electrons with the force of 3. So who's winning the tug of war? Nobody. It's like playing tug of war. Oops. It's like playing tug of war with yourself. So instead of the electron shifting, shh, quiet please. Instead of the electron shifting, the electrons are going to stay right in the center of the bond. So they don't shift, so you don't get a negative and you don't get a positive, which means you don't get no poles. And if you don't get no poles, the bond is called nonpolar. Uh, the easiest way to recognize a nonpolar covalent bond is to look for a diatomic. All of your diatomics, your obsessed Cleveland Browns fans have no intelligence. All of your diatomics will have nonpolar covalent bonds. Okay? Because you're bonded to yourself. You'll have identical electronegativities. All right. Um, so, in short, the nonpolar covalent bond is two of the same non-metals and a polar covalent bond, if we could just go back to that one real quick, that the polar covalent bond is two different non-metals. Okay, I think that's it for tonight everybody. Uh, have a great night and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.